Hello, this is part two in our Getting Started with Google Earth Engine tutorial series. Today we will be going over image collections and how to filter them. Image collections are just what they sound like, collections of images from existing sources we discussed in the last video. This means that we can load into Earth Engine a collection of all the images that exist for that data type, whether it be Landsat 7, Landsat 8, any of your elevation data, it's all of the images in that collection, hence the name image collection. This means that you won't have to go search the USGS portal year by year hoping that you can find images that are available. Image collections allow for a good range of data, but many times we do not need to take such a large range into consideration. Processing Landsat images would take a lot of time even with the resources allocated by Google if we're processing every single image in the Landsat image collection. Because of this, we'll want to filter an image collection so it fits the space we are concerned with. Date and area generally are the biggest factors, however cloud cover could easily be an issue depending on the location and the time the images were taken. So I'm going to walk you through how we're going to do this. So first things first, we're going to locate the city of El Paso right here, zoomed in, and then we're just going to use our inspector tool to get the coordinates right here. And the easiest way to do this is simply to copy and paste them into our new variable that we're going to create and that is going to be a geometry variable and if you need some help finding out what that is or you need some more parameters you can come over here to docs for your documentation go to geometry and you have all these other different types of geometry but this time since we have a coordinate we're going to be using a point geometry so I'm going to create a variable and this time we're going to call it I'm going to call it city and they're going to say that equals our geometry function And then we have a dot point, since we're using point, and then our parentheses, and then just paste in your coordinate. It's important to remember that it does utilize a comma in between. One of the things that Earth Engine can do it is I can actually create a Google Earth style pin that goes in your map right here. The only thing about that is that if you create that pin, it's a visual pin and you can't use this variable inside your code as far as I know. So we're going to keep this as a variable within ours and then we will just print it to the outside for later. So if we wanted to add the point to the map, what we do just like last time, map dot add a layer. We're adding a layer to the map and we're going to add city and be sure you use your semicolon at the end and if we run this you should be able to see a point has been added right there visually it's not that appealing but there it is a point and it's centered right over the coordinates that we've established this allows us right now to see where the area in question we're going to be working with just for our own reference if you're running the code several times or trying to debug your code you don't want to be looking for where along where you've been doing the processing it's better just to know and see it right here. The next part is we'll be adding some dates of interest. When you load in an image collection, you're loading it in from all of the dates that have ever been taken of that image. And most of them do have a date range, but we might have a specific range of interest. There are several ways to do this. You can either do this within the actual filtering itself, or you can create two variables and then run the variables. So I'll, I'll explain it once we get to the filtering part, what that looks like. So for now, we're going to create a variable, which is going to be start. and that and that's going to be our date function. Once again, if you're having if you don't know what these are, you can take a look at the documentation. It's going to help you out a lot and we're going to be interested in a date. What you can do with this is sim this function is simply taking a text date and creating a JavaScript understood date so that it can read it as a date in the in the format. It has a special format it uses and we're going to do um, finish for our finish date. That is going to be another text date that we're going to enter in. And I'm just copying and pasting these because I was interested in these. But I'm actually going to adjust this. And we're going to check just for a one year difference between the two of these. So we're going to check from May 30th of 2013 to May 30th of 2014. This means that when we filter our image collection, we will get all the images that have been taken within these two dates. Now, it might be 
part of your research where you need to know the certain dates or a certain range, this is where you're going to need to know that information. Particularly if you're dealing with different weather occurrences or you're dealing with maybe deforestation, you would be looking at the dates that you're concerned with right there. Next is we're going to create our image collection. So what this looks like is finding a source of data and right here, this is where you can go and you can look up different sources of data. Right here, it has all your different rasters. This has places, kind of like your simple Google Earth map. And here are your different rasters, like we talked about last time. You can have Landsat 5, no, if I could type correctly. You're going to have all of these different rasters right here, many more to choose from. You can actually go and import them directly into your map, and if you select them, you can then go and see a page like this, which tells you the date availability. This is going to affect how you filter it. This is your provider. These are the different ways that you can look it up. And this is the image collection ID, which you'll be running in our Earth Engine code. And this is just a short description. These are in Google Earth Engine. So if you ever search one and you want to find out more about it, you can, you can click on it and it'll take you there. And then you can also get a link to it in case you want to put that in the comments. I usually make a habit of including that in the comments so I can go back and look at it. Creating our image collection, we're going to need to create a variable and we're going to create an image collection based on that Landsat 8 raw scenes that are orthorectified. So create a variable, again, we're going to call this L, we call this El Paso, and that equals our image collection function. So right here, we have image collection functions that allow us to create image collections, and we have a whole lot of different parameters we can use. These will come in handy later on when you're trying to manipulate image collections or trying to do certain things with them such as filter them by date or time, and that's what we're going to be doing today. So these are going to come in handy. We're going to create an image collection that is our ee. And this is going to be our Landsat ID that was up here. So we're going to take that and we're going to just simply copy and paste it because that's what we're concerned with. And realize we're entering it as a string, not a raw value input. Just a, it's a string, so that's where it derives it from. And then, normally, if we just wanted to enter in all of this, put the semicolon right there. But in this case, we're not. We're going to press Enter, and we're going to put a dot filter bounds. This is telling the code where we want to filter the area for our image. So if we put a semicolon at the end of the image collection, it would simply be taking in everything that we had had in that image collection. But now we're concerned with the city. We're going to put, we're going to filter our bounds by the point, which is our variable up here, which is city. Then we're going to press enter again and check the. There we go, that's better. If it if it works and if it's a correct recognized function, it'll turn purple and that's how you know that you entered it incorrectly. If it didn't, then you need to go back and look at it again. Next, we're gonna filter it by date. And this is where we're gonna enter in our start and finish. So start and then finish. And then we're going to press again and then we're going to sort so it's, it's another function here. And we're going to go, and what we're going to do right now is we're going to find cloudy free images. So there is in the metadata of these images that have been taken, there is a line called cloud cover and it has a value. And Earth Engine has in it that it can select those values as it's filtering your image collection and find the ones that are deemed non-cloudy. So we're going to do cloud cover false because we do not want cloudy images. And then we're going to put our semicolon because that's our filter. So currently what we've done, created an image collection, filtered it by the city bounds, we filtered it by the date, and we filtered it by the cloud cover. I should mention that the city bounds is not the city limits. It's just a point with a certain pre-described geometry around it. So now that we have our image collection, you might want to find out what's in your image collection. So there's a few steps to do that. We're going to print out the number of images in the collection. So that's another variable. 
and we're going to call it count, and that equals our image collection. So I'm going to save yourself some time. Just copy and paste it. Dot size, and this is another function. And then, now that we have this variable, it's going. This variable contains the size of the image collection. So we'll simply go print. And this will allow us to enter in some descriptive text. And then you're going to enter a comma, and then you're going to choose what variable you're going to print out, so it would be count. End it with a semicolon. Now let's try and run it and see what we get. You can see right here your console is going to is computing the number of images within this area. Sometimes it takes a little while if it's got a lot of numbers to image, if it's got a lot to filter through. And we can see right here that there are 23 images within this date range that are cloud free. So that's a good product to work with. You got 23 images if you needed to do any sort of analysis, depending on what you might be doing. It might work, it may not. You may need to go through and adjust this cloud cover variable right here. Many times what you might be able to do is, we'll check, I'll show you later, we can get the metadata and actually look and see what the values for cloud cover are and you might find out that maybe 30% of your image has clouds and you can work with the rest of it that's still there. So you might choose to adjust this and you maybe put a value here instead of a operation like that. Finally, what we're gonna do is we're going to sort by cloud cover property and get the least cloudy image. So what that looks like is selecting an image out of the image collection. So what we're going to do is create a variable and we'll call it best for the best image. And we're going to create an image now. Remember last time in the video we talked about images and now we talked about image collections. Well, an image is simply an image inside a collection. So we're going to create our image using our function again. And this we're going to use the image collection. Going to sort and we're going to sort it by cloud cover. So this takes whatever values are still there for cloud cover and then returns whatever one is located in the first position. And that's another function within the with engine. Then we will print out a line that gives us our least cloudy image and prints out the image information. So let's run that again. Okay, let's see. Uh, up there. Try this again. And right there. Here we go. And now we can see that this image right here is the least cloudy image. And if we look right here in the properties, we can see that the cloud cover is this value right here, and there's a lot of other values that we can work with. You might be able to set your filter to filter out images with only this value or greater, or if it's this value or less, it will not include them. Those are other things you can include in this area right here. There are functions and other things that are set up so you can actually filter based on these, and I can go over that in another video. And now that we've already gotten that, we're going to maybe look at some metadata for the rest of it. So let's pull that up right here. If you're concerned with a specific value and you didn't maybe want to get all of that, let's take a look and see if we can find the date acquired. So if we're curious as to maybe when this image was taken, we can pull that up from the code. If you might be working on a project and each time you print an image, you want to know where, what date it was taken. This is what you would do. You would go to create another variable known as date. It can be whatever you want, but I'm calling it date. And we're going to say equals our best image. And we're going to get the function within there. So if you need to look at it, go into the documentation. And we're going to go to a let's do this, date acquired. And these are all available. You can pull up the manual for Landsat 7 to find out what all of these are and it gives them a definition. I can put a link to that manual in the description so that way you can have it. Um, you can also look it up through Google Earth Engine and it's on their website as well. 
and then we're going to print this to put some descriptive text and a comma and then we're going to date and now we'll run it again and this gives us the date that the least cloudy image right here was taken and so it's basically as simple as that. You can make more complex ways of filtering your images. You might want to do a rectangle, or if you have a large area that you're concerned with, you can use the geometry. You have all these different ones you can filter within a certain area, filter within maybe dates that you're concerned with, filter with cloud cover, filter with other values. If you have a, a data set that already has maybe something like NDVI already computed, you might select on a specific NDVI value or a majority of that. This is simply a way to whittle down what information you have and get it into a more working form. So come back next time where we'll be working with some more Google Earth Engine and thank you for watching. If you have any questions, let me know and comment with them and I will work to answer them.